What a great week it's been. I hope that, men, you took care of your Valentine today. If not, this message is going to be very provocative today. It's going to prick your heart. Probably even more than that, your wife's going to look at you and go, what, was, what were you thinking? So uh, maybe it's not too late. Maybe you can make up ground if you didn't. But uh, this morning, it's all about relationship. Amen? It's all about relationship. And God is wanting to engage in relationship with people. And He has from the beginning. And that's what I'll preach about this morning. But I believe God wants to have that relationship with you and I. Amen. It's His heart's desire. It's His longing. And so we're going to read about that this morning. Then we're going to study it today. And I believe before we leave here that somebody that maybe you have fallen away from God in your relationship. Maybe you haven't been as uh, well attending and cultivating that relationship as you have been in the recent past. I believe God's ready to, to bridge that gap with you and to walk back into that relationship with you and begin to move in your life as only God can move. Amen? He needs you and I. He, he is not the same without us. He needs us. He made us for our worship. He made us to love Him in reciprocation. Amen? But as He is not the same without us, we are sure not the same without Him today. And if you are walking in this life and trying to journey this out without Him, I feel sorry for you today. And, and I wish that you could hear this message today and let it resound and let it pound into your spirit today because God is love. God's love is around you. It is desiring you. He wants to be in relationship this morning. Amen. If you have your Bibles and turn to Jeremiah chapter 31, and then I'm going to lift something out of the New Testament as well from 1 John. And um, uh, I am excited about our Easter series. I almost want to give the title to it today because I'm so excited about it. But if I do, I'll just blow the whole thing. You're going to have to come back the first Sunday in March to get the title. But I'm going to tell you, it is working on my spirit. It is working in my life. And I believe that this uh, Easter season is going to be phenomenal. And we will launch it the first Sunday in March. But let's get ready. Amen. Easter's close. It's by. Let's get ready to, to fill this place up twice on that Sunday. Uh, I have even, you know, have breathed out in the past the, 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 a, a curse word. And that is a third service. <laughs> but uh, so far, I have not been able to convince the rest of my team about a third service just yet. But I'm going to tell you, if it keeps growing like this and moving like this, Easter won't hold us on two services and we'll have to do something extra. But I believe God is moving in all of that. Amen? Let's give Him praise this morning. He is worthy today. He is worthy. Amen. Jeremiah chapter 31 and verse 3 says, The Lord hath appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. 1 John chapter 4 says this, verse 7 and 8, Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is is love. Amen. Let's talk about it this morning. It's about relationship. Amen. It's about relationship. Let's pray together. Lord, we love you today. Thank you for this worship team that has led us into your presence. And now your word is to come forth. And I pray, God, that I could be the vessel that you use today. And Lord, help me to move me and myself out of the way today. And allow you to speak through me, through the Spirit today, Lord anoint and strengthen and bless my words today, God, that they would not be mine but yours. And I pray, God, that every heart would receive today what you have in this place for us as we continue to grow in faith together. I pray, God, that we could see today how strong and how desirous you are for a relationship with every person that's in this room. God, we've not done anything to move ourselves outside of that desire in your heart. God, we've not committed any sin, O oh Lord, that would, that would move us from that desire that's in your heart. Help us to see that today, God. Help us to understand that today. And God, we will praise you and give you glory for these things. It's in Jesus' name we pray today. Amen. Amen. Let's love him with our, with our voice and with our hand clap today. We love you, Jesus.
Thank you, Lord. Blessed be your name, God. Blessed be your name. Amen. Amen. It's about relationships today. Amen. You may be seated. If you missed it to, uh, Wednesday, we had a great Valentine's Day right here at Church of Pentecost. I hope you brought your date to the greatest place to bring them to. But hopefully during the week, you took care of your Valentine. If you didn't, then your relationship is probably struggling a little bit this morning. And you probably hadn't gotten over it just yet. And I might be even uh, poking and prodding somewhere where pastor shouldn't be. Because if you didn't, your wife probably just got reminded again. Pastor, why did you remind her again that I forgot that it was Valentine's Day? But let's talk about relationship this morning. You know, relationship brings several aspects into our life, and I want to talk about those. One of those, and one of the most important, is intimacy. Relationship brings intimacy. How do we learn to be intimate with God? James chapter 4 and verse 8 says this, Draw nigh to God... And he will draw nigh unto thee. This morning, if you are not intentional in your relationship with your spouse, if you're not intentional with your relationship with your significant other this morning, if you're not intentional, right, with with your God this morning, then you are missing it. Because intimacy doesn't just happen. Intimacy is something that is intentional and that is brought forth. It comes forth when you give your spouse those words that she wants to hear. When she gets that card that she's been waiting on, those those roses or whatever you give her. Whatever it was that you passed on to her this week uh, to show that token of love that you have for her, I pray that it worked for you. I, I pray that it was the right thing for you this morning. But this morning, don't forget. There's one that gave much more to me in my life. Amen. The one that gave himself that I could have life and have life eternal this morning. If I forget that I have to be intentional with my relationship with him, I am forgetting one of the most important things in my life. Where is your prayer life? Where is your intentional time with God? Where is it that you intend every day to get alone with Him and say, Okay, God, it's me and you. I've got to tell you how good you have been to me. I've got to tell you how much I love you and thank you for saving my soul from a lake of fire. Amen. I am so thankful today that God has brought us out and is walking in a new covenant with us today. This morning, you cannot let that go by you just by accident. You can't just every now and then just throw him a little little something over there. That's not how your relationship with God should be this morning. It should be something that you and him alone know where that closet is. You and him alone know where that time is, where you and he alone know where to get to because he's done much more for me than he's done anybody in this room. And so I'm not about to forget it this morning. I'm not about to let it go by today. I have to be intentional in my intimacy with God. Amen. How do I get intentional? I'll tell you how you get intentional. You read Psalm chapter 1 and verse 1 and 2. It says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. If you want to know who your God is, you need to know what he's speaking. You need to know what he's saying. You need to know what he has given to you. How do you find that? I'll tell you how you find that. You find that right here in this Word. Amen. He has spoken to you. I, I, I get uh, a little frustrated sometimes when we, we, we hear people, that they want somebody to give them a word. Would you give me a word, Pastor? Well, I, I don't know if I can give you a word. It's any better than this word. So what are you waiting on? If you're not eating this word, how are you going to eat my words? Amen. My words aren't going to sustain you if you're not already eating the words of eternal life and the blessing that comes from this. Well, I don't understand King James Version. Well, get you a version you understand. But get you some word going in your life. Amen. Get something that, that speaks to you every day because this word is the intimacy that God wants to give back to you today. This is the place where God wants to dwell with you. He said, in your law, I will meditate day and night. 
day and night. You need to be consuming the Word of God. It is His Word spoken to you. And when you read His Word, your understanding of Him will deepen. Some people that have a superficial reading of the Word, they read a few things and they, and they get hung up on some stuff that really doesn't matter. They, they get hung up on some things and, and get way outside of the box. But if you'll go back and read those four Gospels, if you go read about those men slapping him in the face and spitting on him and the crown of thorns on his head and the, and the cross and, and the bleeding out that he did for you and for me, it'll change your life today. He is a loving, caring, awesome, incredible God and he's given you his word, something to meditate on day and night. This morning, you need to be intentional. This morning, you need to read His Word. And the third thing that will lead you into intimacy with your God, and I hate to spring this up this morning, but it is what you and I will all face in this life, and that is trials. You see this girl over here with, that's with me that we've been together for 37 years. We could write a book, I'm telling you, about some of the trials and some of the things and, and, and some of the thing, places we've been and some of the roads that we have traveled. And I'm traveling with a great partner because when I'm down, she lifts me up. When she's down, I lift her up. There's nothing that can replace that relationship. You understand the miles that we have traveled and the things that we have gone through and the journey that we have been on together has created intimacy between me and Gina. This morning, your God is walking with you as well. I'm here to tell you He's with you in every trial. He's been with you in every situation today. And you need to understand today that He hasn't left you and He hasn't forsaken you. You may have walked away from Him, but He hasn't walked away from you this morning. And it's such a blessing to know that when you have your hardest hour, when you have your deepest trial, when you have the thing that's going to drive you to the place and the edge of, you don't even know if it's worth living, then that's when you're going to find there's a Savior. That's where you're going to find the King of kings and the Lord of lords and a, and a God that wants to grab you by the hand and walk with you through the trial of life and share with you and show you that He is a God of intimacy and He is a God that cares. He's a God that loves you above all things this morning. Amen. Romans 5 says this, and not only so, but we glory in tribulations. And also, knowing that tribulation work with patience and patience, experience and experience hope and hope maketh not a shame because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. Come on this morning, if you're walking through this life without the Holy Ghost, you're walking amiss today. If you're walking through this life without His Spirit indwelling in you, you're walking amiss today. I don't want to go through a trial. I don't want to go through a tribulation. I don't want to go through a situation today without the Holy Ghost working in my life because He orders my steps and He leads my path and He guides me every step of the way. That's the intimacy that I have with my God. Many years ago, a popular evangelist was called to come and to preach. And he was a great speaker and a great orator. And yet he insisted to bring along one of his friends, an older, more seasoned pastor and preacher. The evangelist spoke first as he stood and with his voice and with his oratory uh, 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 rendition of 23rd Psalms, he began to move the crowd as he just read Psalm 23. They were in awe. They were astounded by his, uh, his voice inflections and his, and his gift uh, to bring forth and uh, 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 to read that in such a way that it would move people for a moment. After he finished, he, he asked his elder preacher to come and to read the same. And as the elder preacher began to read the Psalm 23, the people in the room began to weep. He wasn't as polished, he wasn't as pure, he, wasn't as, he didn't have the same uh, way of giving the, the words that the orator did. But everybody in the room began to weep as this old preacher began to read the 20, 23rd Psalm. The evangelist then returned to the podium and told them, he said, I touched your eyes and I touched your ears, but my friend today touched your heart. I know the 23rd Psalm, he said, but he knows the shepherd. What do you know this morning? 
Do you know the 23rd Psalm? Or do you know the shepherd? When you've walked through the valley of the shadow of death, is it just some some, some polished reading that somebody gives at a funeral? Or is it a place where you know, I've walked through the valley of the shadow of death and I know who was with me. I know who carried me. It was the shepherd that walked with me. Come on, this morning, there's a difference today in just knowing some things. There's a difference in that and intimacy this morning. Come on, the God of God and the King of kings and the Lord of glory and the creator of all this today isn't just create this for you to be in all of it, but he wants to walk with you today. I said He wants to walk with you today. I said He wants to travel this road with you today. And I don't know where your trial is. I don't know what your situation is today. But I'm telling you, there's a God in this room that wants to walk with you through your trial. And you will find that that is where intimacy is well placed. You see, there's a difference in talent and relationship. I can be talented all day long. But if I don't have relationship, then I can't minister to you. I can't tell you anything that you don't already know because talent will not be enough today. There's, there's a performance and there is response. And this morning, I don't want this to be a performance. I want it to be in response. You see, the effectiveness of all that we do is not found in our gifts and talents and abilities, but it is found in relationship. And He's calling somebody today It's a relationship. Oh, Solomon was gifted with wisdom. According to 1 Kings 4.32, Solomon wrote 3,000 Proverbs. And he also wrote numerous songs. However, we know that in the end he was empty and found nothing at all because he he had wisdom, but he had no relationship. And so with everything in him, he said, Vanity, vanity, all is vanity. Yet the adulterous, murderous David, in his Psalms he wrote, and he's moved mankind for generations because he didn't write it out of wisdom. He wrote it out of relationship. Solomon stood above, but David stands out. This morning... You need to walk in relationship and not in just giftings. How how intimate are you with your Savior today? Relationship doesn't just bring intimacy. Relationship also brings dependency. Proverbs 3, verse 5 and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He will make straight your paths. Amen. You see, we learn God's will through relationship, depending on Him. We have to pray. Amen? I said we have to pray. Philippians 4, 6, and 7, Do not be anxious about anything. But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Come on, this morning, you got nothing else to lean on today. Nothing will save you today. Nothing will hold true today. But if you'll lean on Him, if you'll depend on Him today, amen, if you'll take it to the Lord in prayer. Come on, take your hopes up this morning. Take your fears up this morning. Take your needs up this morning and lean on Him today. You can depend on Him today. You can depend on your feelings, but you can depend on your God today. He's here and He's willing. Dependency is trust. Amen. I've seen these exercises where they put somebody up on a platform and they have to trust that everybody behind them is going to catch them. And they have to just fall back. And, and, and many people, right before they fall back, they kind of kneel and make sure that everything's okay. But that's not trust. They kind of bend their knees and kind of... No, they just, you have to stay straight up and just fall straight back into their arms trusting they're going to catch you. That was the picture of Job when he said, Though he slay me, 
yet will I depend on Him. Though my life may be expended, I will depend on Him. Amen? Dependency is patience. Matthew 6, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be added. Just be patient and be persistent this morning. It takes some time and it takes effort to develop a relationship with Him. This morning, how deep is your dependency? How deep is your walk? How deep do you really, really want and trust God this morning? You see, if I'm not careful, I will begin to, again, rely on me. I'll begin to rely on my abilities and I'll rely on my own self and my decision making. And I may have been fairly good at making some decisions in my life. But now is a place I can look back and say, if I'd have just asked God first on some of these things, some things might have been a little different. Amen? He's kept me. He's helped me. He's brought me right to where I need to be this morning. But I might have avoided a few pitfalls along the way if I'd have been, had my hearing in tune with what God was trying to say to me. Come on, quit depending on yourself and depend on Him this morning. How deep is your dependency on God? The third thing that, that uh, our relationship will bring is obedience. It's obedience. It's surrender. Obedience is, oh, it's such a bad word these days. Nobody wants to be told, you have to obey me. You have to, you have to do what I tell you to do. Can you just be honest this morning? Somebody's going to tell you what to do. You don't live in, in this lawless, free will and country or anything. You just, you, somebody's going to tell you what to do. If you start living the way you want to, the, the, the Rapids Parish Sheriff's going to tell you what to do. The, the DA's going to tell you what to do. Or, or the jailer's going to tell you what to do. One of them's going to be telling you what to do. Come on, you can't just walk around and do whatever you want to do. But the Word is very clear in this matter. Some of us would be willing to sacrifice. Some of us would be willing to give our best and sacrifice. If I ask for you to sacrifice something this morning, give an extra offering, many of you in this place would be willing to sacrifice. If I said, listen, this week we're going we're to have six nights of revival, amen, we're going to come back to the house of God, and you would sacrifice to come back because uh, you would do whatever pastor asks, and if he feels like that's what he calls to do, that's fine. The Word is very clear. He says obedience is better than sacrifice. Obedience is better than sacrifice. How deep is your walk with God today? How deep is your walk with God? Are you really in relationship this morning? Because if you're in relationship, this will mean a lot to you. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Samuel said, Hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Who is he talking to? Saul, why is he telling him that? Because he disobeyed. He brought back all of this precious stuff from the, from the king that he had just conquered. He brought it all back and he said, we're going to bring this back so we can sacrifice it to the Lord. Come on, God's not. He, the Lord told him not to bring anything back. Don't spare anything there. And he disobeyed God and he brought those things back so he could sacrifice it to the Lord. Samuel told him, Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of rams. Obedience is acknowledging God's sovereignty in your life. And that's where we have an issue. That's where you and I tend to lessen our walk with God, lessen our relationship with God, because we do not want anything sovereign in our life except us. I want to be sovereign in my life. I struggle with being sovereign in my life. I'm being honest with you this morning. I want to lead. I want to. I know what I like. I know what I want. I know what I desire. And if I'm not careful, my desires will overshadow and overpower 
what God is trying to tell me, and so I am forced into a place. Am I going to obey and hearken unto God, or am I going to continue walking in my, pro, in my place? It's giving Him control. That's what obedience is this morning. It's giving Him control. You see, in conclusion of what I'm saying this morning, Jesus gave us the best example as He was in Gethsemane. And we see the intimacy and the dependency and the obedience of the fleshly man, Jesus Christ, as He said, not my will, but Thy will be done. It's a hard prayer this morning. It's not easy for me and it's not easy for you. But if I'm going to walk in the right relationship with God, then I'm going to seek after everything I can in relationship with Him. By knowing His Word, we feel the call and the urgency to obey. John 14, 21 he sa- says, he, hath, he that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. He that knows my commandments and keeps them, that's who loves me. You can say you love God all you want to, but if you're not obeying God in your life and He's not sovereign in your life, He's not at the top of your list this morning. This morning we need to let Him rise up. And this will be the, most, the highest relationship that I have this morning. Come on, it's God first and everything this morning. Come on, and if I do that, I will be blessed because if God is first, then everything that flows down from Him will be a blessing from Him. Obedience is a sure sign of my love for Him. Not my will, but Thy will be done. Pastor, why do we need all of that? I'll tell you why. Because relationship brings reassurance. Relationship brings reassurance. I'm fairly confident in myself. Maybe too confident in myself. And therefore, God uses people to place me back in the place that I should be. Maybe even some of y'all. I'm not so pointing any fingers this morning for sure. But all of us, all of us, we feel a little confident. And then something happens in our life and we realize, I'm really not that good. I'm really not that smart. I'm really not that special. My grandmother Wiedner lied to me. She said, you're special. And my first grade teacher didn't think I was so special. She said, you got a lot of work to do, son. You're not that special. She was followed up by my second grade teacher. And so on. And a lot of other teachers that I have in my life on a daily basis that just kind of slap me around and go, you're not that special. But when I'm in with my Savior... When I'm with my God and He's talking to me, He reassures me. I'm all that and a bag of chips, son. I am all that and a bag of chips. I am, I am telling you, when I'm with Him, I have the reassurance. I feel like David. Come on, let's get it on, giant. Let's go. You want to round with me? Let's do this thing. Come on. When I'm with God, I have a reassurance. Amen. Jeremiah said, and I read it earlier, The Lord hath appeared of old unto me and said, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore with loving kindness have I drawn thee. Amen. Philippians said, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving present your request to God. And that peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ. Isaiah said, So do not fear, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Maybe I get some people with me this morning. Matthew 11 said, Come unto me, all you are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Romans 8 said, For I am convinced that neither death 
nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither present nor the future, nor any power, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate me from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Come on, are you deep enough in your relationship with Him that you can say, from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus my Lord? Is our what you have to put there today, or can you say my? Is your relationship deep enough with Him this morning that no angel, no demon, no power, no principality, not life, not death, not anything in this world can separate me and Him this morning? If that's the truth, then you're in relationship with Jesus today. And I want to be in relationship because it's all about relationship. Stand with me this morning. As I close in 1 John chapter 4 again. Beloved, let us want love one another, for love is of God. And everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not, knoweth not God. For God is love. I love you, Lord. For your mercies never fail me. All my days, I walk with you. I'm going to close with this today. I found this, and I'm going to just, it's a direct quote, so I'm not even going to pretend like I'm that smart today. One of our leading teachers in our organization for many years, Brother David Norris, he said this The Bible has ten commandments, four gospels, and two testaments. But just one thing, love. The scriptural narrative serves up an amazing account of the Creator who lovingly woos His creation. The Lord does not force His will upon us, but rather gives us space to respond. When we freely choose to commit, to purposely pour ourselves into that loving relationship, the Bible offers a special name for such commitment. In covenant. Sadly, too many rebel against their Maker. Adam and Eve were the first to do so, and so, and as well as the first ones to understand that such the such actions have consequences. But Adam and Eve did not die immediately for two reasons. First, God is merciful. First, God is merciful. And second, God's love is stronger than your weakness. God's love is stronger than your weakness. I'm getting in relationship with Him this morning because I can't do this life without Him. I can't walk in this life without Him the goodness of God. You see, when relationship was broken and man couldn't find his way back and man couldn't get back to God, we know the story. It's a love story beyond measure. God left heaven and wrapped himself in flesh. And He walked in this earth to mitigate our sin through redemption. Hear me this morning. What I could not do, the gulf that was fixed that could not be passed, He came and did it for me and for you this morning. Through the precious blood, Jesus Christ, I stand in this pulpit today. I'm sure not worthy to stand here. I sure don't have the wherewithal and the understanding and the power within me to stand here. But it's through the precious blood of Jesus Christ that I'm able to stand and tell you this morning. His love had a plan. And His love still has a plan. And you may have walked away from it this morning. 
but he's still calling. He's still calling your name this morning. He's still walking in that place, searching and looking for you, sir, and looking for you, ma'am. He wants to be in relationship with you today. And I don't know what you may have done to feel like you've broken that chain of relationship with Him today. But He had foreknowledge of that. He had foreknowledge of where you would be this morning. It's your will to decide today which way you're going to take His foreknowledge. He told Cain, sin lies at the door. He had foreknowledge, but it was Cain's decision. This morning, the path that you choose this morning will have different destinations when you leave this place today. And His foreknowledge, I believe, probably knows both which which way it could go. He told David when he was facing an army, he said, if you go down, this is what's going to happen. And he told him what was going to happen. If you go down to fight this battle, this is what the outcome will be. He had foreknowledge of that outcome. But he backed it. So David backed away. David heard from God and backed away. And guess what? They got victory. They didn't face defeat. They got victory. Two outcomes. God had the foreknowledge of both outcomes. But the will that had to be surrendered was in David's hands to make the choice. This morning, your will, it's your will this morning. The outcome can be as he decided it for you if you listen to what he's saying today. See, I can't afford to navigate a, a day in this life without that relationship. And you need that relationship. And if it's broken this morning, I wouldn't leave here without it being repaired. If it's broken this morning, I would get on my face before God and say, God, forgive me. Wash me in your blood. Change my heart, oh God, and change my life. Because the trajectory of my life, oh God, has got to be in the place where you want me to be. And I can only find that in relationship today. That's the only place you can find it this morning is in relationship. Would you come and pray with me this morning? I want His right relationship in my life. I want to hear from Him this morning. I want to know that I'm living for Him this morning. I want to know that I'm hearing from Him this morning. I want to repair any bridge, any gap, any brokenness this morning. God, I'm calling on You today, Jesus. I love You, Lord. For Your mercies never fail. All my life, oh Lord. I love you, Lord. For your mercy never fails me. And all my days I've been held in your Thank you. hands. Thank you, Jesus. From the moment Thank that you. I wake up. Won't you come until I put your life in his hands? I want you to repair the breach this morning. Of the goodness. Won't you let him speak into your life afresh and new this morning? Cause all my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. Every try. With every breath every that I am able. Never fail me, God. I will see never left me alone. Of the goodness. I repair God. anything between me and you this morning, God. I love your voice. Cleanse my heart, oh Lord Jesus. You have led me Work through the fire. Morning, Touch me, oh God, I pray. Nights, Deliver me, oh Lord. Like no Deliver me, oh God. I've known you as a father. I see a cry out to the Lord this morning. I've known you as a I still let him know this morning how much you love me. I, I love you, Jesus. In the goodness I love you, my Savior. God. Hallelujah. All my life you have been faithful. Thank you, Jesus. All my life you have been so, so Is 
reaching this morning. with you before I leave this house today. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, God, I love you, Lord. Oh, I feel his presence so strong right now. I love you, Jesus. I thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Enemy, you're a liar today. There is nothing that can keep us from our Savior this morning. There's nothing that's too done too hard, too much, oh God. It can't be covered by the blood of Jesus this morning. Your hand is over this place right now. Oh, in Jesus' name. Come on, let's pray together right now. I believe the Lord's not done just yet this morning. Hallelujah, Jesus. God moving us this morning, Lord. Draw that prodigal home this morning, God. Touch that empty life this morning that's in this room today, God. Touch that heart, Lord, that's ready to throw in the towel and give up today. I'm battling today, God, for them. I'm standing the gap for them right now, God. I refuse to give up. I refuse to surrender, God. Not one life, Lord Jesus. We're all worthy, Lord Jesus. We're all made worthy today by your presence, oh God. Oh, Lord Jesus, the enemy's a liar today. We are something in you today. We are made in your image, oh God. We are created for your glory, created to worship today, God. Even in our mistakes, even in our issues, oh God. Even in our struggles, God. You're still in this room right now, Lord, to minister. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. 